Hello there, Reddit. We're looking at a solution to a weaving problem for Slat's rescue belt. That is, when, as you're doing each run of stitches here, hang on a sec, let me get my coils all in order. All right, the pattern would extend tilted. Now this doesn't happen to bother me personally, but there's somebody on Reddit who's having a bit of difficulty attaching it to a carbiner. Now, you could just attach it, as I've shown, this way, because then the tilt will cancel. Do I have that right? Yeah. There's a way that you can attach, you can attach it pretty easily to the carbiner because, uh, so that the tilt will cancel, but if you want to attach it straight for other things. You notice I've skipped one here in the middle, and I'm adding an extra loop on the other side. The reason for this is, be is to counteract a, a feature of the normal slats rescue belt, that is this loop right here adds length on that side, and that will subtract length on that side. So we add an extra loop here and we take one out of the middle. And work that around. Now it's a little awkward to get used to, but if you've um, only, it's no more awkward than when you were learning the slats rescue belt in the first place. Okay, I'm gonna jump forward a bit so you can see what this looks like when it's a little longer. Cut. All right, that's about far enough, so you can see this right here. So on this edge, you have a very interesting kind of rolling, tucking pattern. And over here, you have the bottom of... Oh, hang on a sec. One of these. And on that side, it looks like crochet, and it looks the same this side as that side. All right. Now, you may notice that as you're skipping the one right there and, there and going around, that this is a little unwieldy and loose. And give it a sec. This part right here is a little unwieldy and loose. You get used to making that after after about five or so stitches. If you leave it loose, like here, we'll, we'll take you really slowly through the tightening process. The section is as normal, but this part is a little weird. Okay, so I'm gonna, come on. All right, drawing up from here. And then holding that down so that it stays close. There we go. Now, you may also notice that as you're tying this, your cord hanging off free to the side is going to want to twist up. Here, let me get that out of the way. Twist up quite a bit. Now, a solution to this is instead of just going around and around and around and around and around in the same direction, if you alternate directions with every stitch. It doesn't bunch up like that. Like if, you, you, uh, if other people have ever wondered why it's two tracks on my triple chain and not one, that's a, an effect of the same basic strategy. It's made so that it doesn't spiral up on you. It's not initially as pretty but it looks a little bit more like chainmail, and form is function. Function is form. What makes it look nice is that it is useful. And recognizing those properties is where its beauty comes from, which is a very highbrow way of saying get used to it. That's what we do to make it work better. Okay, now I'm gonna jump forward again 
a little bit so that you can see what this looks like. Cut. Alright, so here's what we've got. You can see it alternates in bands like a, a piece of chain mail as opposed to that which is pretty straightforward. All right, this also has more of a sine wavy fractal looks to it. There we go. All right, you may be tempted to use this pattern I very strongly recommend that you use, the, you use this pattern instead. It is much, much better for the reasons that I had previously described. Alright, thanks for watching.